we have crossed back into the Great White North. We are now in Ontario, continuing with our videos. Now, I was going to do the top 10 list. We, Amy and I are going to have our top 10 list this week. It was very hard to do. I looked at 21 horses, actually, on my top 10 list. Now, Amy made it a little easier to whittle down. She said, well, if they didn't go this week, Rose Run AJ, Captain Incredible, that takes two spots. So that makes it a little easier, but it's still pretty difficult. So, um... We're gonna have that video for you. We have the two-year-olds, the three-year-olds, the racehorses. We have, yeah, they just had what was called Super Tuesday in politics. They had a bunch of uh, election stuff they need to take care of. What was it? Uh, primaries they had to do. And uh, our Super Tuesday is gonna be this Tuesday because we're gonna have upwards of 70 horses training. I'm gonna text Curtis and Steve at Northfield Park and ask him if, can we do this? Would you mind? This would be sets for all the two-year-olds that are training and sets for all the three-year-olds. So I, this week in, in particular, I'd sent some videos out of inside training, training. You were training a couple of horses too. Remember when I was wet out and I had to go to, I had to, go to the Meadows? Yeah. And I didn't train any that day. Yeah. But I played videographer that day. And uh, a lot of people messaged, when can we see the three-year-olds? When can we see the three-year-olds? Only fair. They're very, very close to qualifying. Actually, the proximity they're qualifying is right on schedule because what we are going to do at the next preferred sale is move some additional horses out, make room for the last group of horses. And these will be horses, you guys know, just not cutting it. Uh, we don't have any two-year-olds. We have two or three two-year-olds. I'm like, I don't know. This horse got a long way to go. You know who they are. I'm not going to name names and name drop right now. But those horses will reassess, let's say, April 1st. But as of right now, there are some three-year-olds that aren't going to cut it. Right now, I'll tell you, oh, snap, you. Uh, no chance in Hill, potentially Seasons of Love, depending on how she does tonight. There's some horses that just aren't going to be stable horses, and that's just attrition, right? That's just the way it goes. And um, why do you have it so low in here? I was hot. All right, I can tell because it's like you can hang meat in here right now. Freezing. Anyway, um, things went well this week. I was so impressed with the horses. In Ohio today, you see them start to really start to round into shape when you put them on these, you know, strict schedules. Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Friday. It's not interrupted. They don't miss a Friday or miss a Tuesday or, you know, it's rain, it's muddy, it's snowing. When you start seeing them in, in these these very strict training regimens, uh, and we told everybody, Amy made a good point today too, um, you know, we will have like a Tuesday be a little soft coming up. Whereas Friday might be stronger this week. It'll likely be Tuesday right again around 2.32 or so with the two-year-olds. Um, and then, as she said, what we need to do is start, I, I, I told our caretakers again today, keep a close eye on the horses. We need to know, is there any nicks? Are there any cuts? Is there any heat or swelling in places? Did the horse lose a shoe? Is the horse favoring one foot? Is there a little heat in one? Poultice your horses up. Make sure they're eating, especially the day after they train. Did they eat well? Did they jog well? what did the jogger, the person, so in Ohio and in Ontario, we have people that come in and they just jog, just riders. And how did the horse jog? How was the horse feeling? These are things that we all have to be able to answer. And if I ask you, you should be able to tell me. And and that's, we're getting into that routine because the horses are starting to train a little bit harder now. Uh, I've been very fortunate we haven't had anybody re really ring the bell, so to speak, in regards to our horses. A few horses a little lagging behind me, a few horses that we backed off with, but no real issues to speak of, uh, of yet, which is uh, very fortunate so far. Mm. So, um, uh, I did want to talk about the week we had. I was, as I said, very proud of the way the horses trained today. Um, I haven't seen the videos yet, but I know that Danny and Dominic both said the same thing. The horses were impressive today in Ontario. They did everything they had to do. Dominic was telling me about the three-year-olds and how impressed he was with them. A couple of horses that really caught his eye. Uh, especially because a couple of them were, fu were floundering a bit, or widespread panic. Hadn't been doing what he needed him to do the last little while, and has been doing it very, very well over the last two weeks. We've been treating him with EPM medication, and a totally different horse. Perfect. <coughs> that is great to hear. Um, he said that uh, Princess, uh, Pr Paycheck Princess trained good today, or schooled good today at Mohawk for Jacob and all my partners out there, two minutes. Last half at 58, I think he said. He said she was very, very good. Um, 
He also said that Drebin and Militant train good 2-9. So again, they're right in lockstep with what we're about to do on Tuesday. Anywhere between 2-8 and 2-10, the difference being they were on the race bike. We're going to be in the jog cart for our training miles, I believe, on Tuesday. Now, at the track, again, uh, not one of those white hot weeks, but we hit some, some real peaks. Not a lot of valleys, but a lot of peaks. Spitfire overseas, the fastest mile trotted in North America to date as of Friday. March the 8th was Spitfire Overseas by well over, the only horse to go sub 52, Trotter right now, I believe, was uh, Spitfire Overseas. He eclipsed that easily. 151 and 1, they went on about how he broke a year long track record. No, it was a week long track record. He broke it the week before and then rebroke it again his next start. They said it was 53. Well, he went in 52 and 3 the week before, which clearly is faster, and then come right back with a 51 and 1 mile shortly thereafter. So, uh, a big, big week from him. A great week out of Stacy. really. The only blemish was the break by Electric Line. Shocking. He's never made a break before. Uh, so I said to Stacy, she goes, oh, I made a dirty break. He wasn't getting a hold of the track very good. I said, well, if he trained 85 times in his life, he'd run 65 of them. So he's no stranger to making the odd little, the odd gallop. Um, why did he do it? How are we going to mitigate that? I, again, I'll defer to Stacy. She knows the track better than I do at Miami Valley, and it's her job. That's her job to get him right. So we'll see how he bounces back next week. I was really, really impressed with um, Kings County also. Not a sparkling effort. Four full seconds, I believe. Slower than Spitfire Overseas, but uh, looked good. Looked very good closing up strong. What? what? Is this your opening? Or yeah. What is this? You're waiting for the oh, top ten list? Well, you were telling me how difficult it was for you to number them. I was just going to give you a little time. Oh, sorry. Right, old yeller? Yeah, right? How was your week, by the way? Why? I was wondering, how'd your week go? Why? Any highs, any lows? No. Oh, a little chatty today. Well, what do you mean? Any things that stuck into you this week? Any babies, the three year olds, anybody that raced? Race, race, race. 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 trained very good. Impressive. Yes, he was impressive, that's right. Amy trained Brace this week, I thought he was great. We're probably gonna train him in 2.6 or 2.8. Actually, you can go on if you want. You can go on the jog cart, probably. What? You can go on the jog cart. Two six. I think so, yeah. You won't be a problem at all. He's very, very strong right now. He looks great. I was really impressed with the way he got over the track the other day also. So, Brace was good. Anybody else? Any of the babies catch your eye? You want right. Maury today? Yeah. He looked very, very good. In fact, so good that I thought he beat me, and thankfully, we had it all on video. I thought I had three wins. I ended up with five. <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, <laughs> Checks in the mail. <laughs> uh, I thought Amy beat me with momentum, Mori, for sure, but upon further review, it was noted she did not. I held on to win with Grand Slam Dio. The same thing happened when she sits at the bar. I thought that Jason had collared me right at the wire with uh, High High Hopes, which is fine with me. I, we've been waiting a long time for High High Hopes to really show that intensity that we were hoping, which would be the opposite of what her sister ever showed when we trained her. And she did. She looked extremely good today. In fact, truthfully speaking, I expected Green Glitter to be good. I expected Grand Slam Dio to, good, to be good. If you were to say who are the standouts for today, Memento Mori and, and uh, no, three, three standouts. One of them I knew was good, but she is so, so good right now. Rose Run Alexandra, Memento Mori, and uh, High High Hopes were, were the three standouts for me today. I didn't go to any of them. So even though I won five, we were talking about that earlier, I won five and you, you didn't win any. Um, but I thought I thought that Memento Mori looked as impressive as a horse could possibly look today. Um, very, very good. Any more? That I trained? Trained, saw a train, any high points of the week at the stable or the matriarch at the stable? What caught your eye this week? What were you happy with aside from Spitfire? And obviously Kings County, which I just said, now we're just at Monday. We can talk about anything that happened all week. At all. I don't really have anything on the top of my head. Wow. Pretty boring week in the land of Amy as it, as it pertains to the stable. Apparently. <coughs> well, I'll just keep chatting then, okay? Go for it. Wednesday, I went with Lover's Play. You guys know how I feel about Lover's Play, and she certainly didn't let me down. Uh, I'd said to everybody pulling up, you could hear her making noise pulling up, and I'd, I'd heard this noise before. This wasn't a horse 
uh, that had flipped her palate or shut, his, shut her hair off. This was a horse that had just put every fiber of her being into a race. And as a guy who has been around her, it's not shocking. But although I don't like to hear the horses making a noise, I knew exactly when she did it what it was. And it was only validated on the scoping. There was nothing no, at all. A couple little trickles of blood, but again, I think that was just exertion more than anything. This filly, I can tell you right now, tried as hard as she could possibly try. If she could get to 108%, that's what she put into her mile the other day. And I couldn't be prouder of a horse than it. If you don't like lover's play, then you just don't belong at the stable. You just don't like horses. Because she, for, to know her backstory and how injured she was and what her prognosis was, just to live, let alone be a pasture horse. The idea, if you'd asked me a year ago, the idea that she would be a functioning racehorse, impossible. Impossible. After she got hurt. It would literally be impossible. And to see what she has overcome has been truly, truly, truly remarkable. This is not a breeder's crown filly. This is not a filly well on her way to an open trot or winning a major stake race. This is a run-of-the-mill, ordinary, overnight slash potential B stake filly that impresses me so much every time I go on the track. It is, it is shocking and uh, just very, very proud of the trip she made. She did the other day. Third beat three quarters of a length on a terrible track. You know, come from seventh at the three quarter pole, and just very, very proud of her. Anyway, Wallop was fourth, and I was, I was a little negative after the race towards Wallop, and that was truly unfair. The horse just tried at 57 and 1 on a sloppy track. This wasn't a track that you give a second off. This was a sloppy, horrible surface, and rained all day. And that was a big mile from Wallop, also. Very proud of what he did. And then uh, we raced Oh Snap You. She was third, also. We opted to scratch. Uh, no chance in hell. Tiny little temperature, but uh, mostly it was the track. Right? It just here's a horse that we waited a long time to get to the races. We finally got him there, and we're not going to race him on a track that hurt. We trained him this morning. I trained him at two ten this morning. He was great. Uh, I don't know if anybody caught him. There was a loose. Did you know this? There was a loose horse on the track. No, I didn't. So he, he got out of its stall. He had no equipment on, <laughs> and it's loose. And I'm going a mile, almost race speed mile. Uh, this is this is seven fifty in the morning before 8 o'clock. The odds of me getting in an accident before 8 a.m. anywhere <laughs> is staggeringly low. Here's, I, I'm going down the back stretch to the quarter pole and Jeff Conger is coming towards me and he's yelling something. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. I look up and he said, there's a loose horse coming right at you. This horse got no halter on. It's butt naked. Nothing on. I'm like, what is going on here? So I stay along the rail. I continue on. I'm going too fast to pull up No Chance in Hill. He's got a mouth on him like an alligator anyway. It would take me a quarter of a mile to get him stopped. This horse is coming at me. And I'm like, I'm, I'm yelling like, hey, hey. And I kind of move over. And the horse, I don't know whether he couldn't see me or what. But he kind of, he looked like he, he was startled that there was a horse in front of him on a racetrack. And he veered to the right side and somebody corralled him. And then I just continued on my training trip when I'm on 210. And uh, it, apparently it was on video. The guy upstairs had just started videoing oh, and really? caught the whole thing. It might be on the live feed. I have no idea. Caught the whole thing. Anyway. You know what else is on the live feed? What? Me jogging speed as hell 40 minutes before everybody else came out. You just early, honey. Always early. We had to get equipment on a couple of horses. There were some horses that were lacking proper equipment. And mm. I had to lecture a couple of our caretakers today about... Um, writing it down. Write down, one, the equipment that they wear, and if there are any changes when we come off the track. If I go over and say, hey, we're going to put a set of bell boots on the horse, we're going to take that head pull off, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. You need to address that. Not just let it go in one ear and out the other and put the same gear on the next week. I'm getting really angry if that happens. And I had to politely speak to a couple of our caretakers today about updating your equipment cards and using... Look at those hills. I never noticed that before. Look at that. Well, you can't see it. I don't think you missed it. Uh, it was all glass. It was right on the water. It was beautiful. Um, but updating your equipment cards and having equipment cards on hand. Very, very important. They just assume that someone's going to come up and tell them what the horse wears. And it's, there's too much going on to be relying on a rider to do that or a trainer to do that. 
Uh, and then we went to Thursday. Uh, man, pull the shoes again. You and I talked about her being ready. Right? And I convinced myself that she didn't come in until January and uh, that maybe she wasn't ready and didn't have the foundation in her. And I was going to be very protective of her, which I was. And then, lo and behold, she came in November 29th. I don't think that's right. Uh, well, according to the bill, the shipper and the person that had turned them out, the last time she ate food at Schaefer Farms was November 29th. So unless she went on a hunger strike for an extended period of time, it was November 29th. Anyway, she raced great. She'll be that much better next week also. I don't know if next week's the final. I think it might be. Either way, uh, this filly was flawless in her mile. Third and 58 in the you know, yeah, alpha qualifier and 2-2 in the mud. Um, big mile for her, and I'm expecting an even better mile from her next week. Um, International Spy made a break. Tim actually had just messaged me earlier and said that he thought he had a puss pocket coming left front. There was some mistakes made. I thought there was some adjustments that could be made. But ultimately, if you're trying to change equipment or shoeing on a horse, when it has a puss pocket coming, you're using flawed information to make those, you know, to make those determinations. So better yet, just to defer any of that until we get him trained. I said, first thing, he hit his shin last week, left hind. If that's bothering him, give him the week off next week. Then we'll give them a week also work on the puss pocket. Maybe I can go over there a little bit early on Thursday morning uh, and train uh, International Spy and see what, see what we like and what we don't like about him. Um, also, Collector was tremendous. Lights out. My only concern with Collector is if he wins next Thursday, he can't race in the Nomers of Four Series in Miami Valley because they draw, they close it on Friday. And he is not, he's not worse of four today with three wins, but uh, maybe next week. And, and I am not the guy that says, hey, you know, if he gets beat, he gets beat. No, 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 no. We'll wait if you can. It's the way it is. Take the money when you can get it. It's not like they race for $100,000. It might race for thirty or forty grand. So, uh, no, yeah, that would be the class below we won two years ago with our boy Patrick. Remember? No, he's Patrick. Uh, so, Collector was great, and I thought Hallie in the Clouds was fantastic. I think... You know, James said she was a little flat the week before. He may say the same thing again, but he's first over in the last turn with her. I think if you get away, cover, 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 and let her trot home, um, you know, probably in a better... And James is trying to do that, but when the two favorites land, one, two, aside from you, and you have two long shots in front of you sitting third and fourth, you're not getting cover in Mohawk. You could come from 14th, and no one's moving. So, um, got all he was going to get with... Um, with Hallie, and I thought she looked awesome. Now, in another 15 minutes, Patrick the Piranha races. Again, short field, middle of the gate. Not the best spot for Patrick, but I suspect you're looking at another third or fourth from him. So, good luck to all my partners there. We have seasons of love and stay special tonight at London and Mohawk, respectively. Uh, Texas, the Texan Soprano races Saturday at the Poconos. Long odds, 12 to 1. I'm very surprised to see that. I couldn't find a but it's just the way it is. I mean, they, they just opened up, so I guess they don't know who's in that class. We'll see uh, soon enough. Kenobi on Sunday, who's been racing great down for the Beckwiths in uh, in Saratoga. So great to see that. And then Monday, we just come back with the, our strongest lineup, as always on Monday. Renegade Gypsy from the rail. He'll have to deal with the new track record holder. The fastest horse ever at, by the way, ever at Miami Valley because the track record overall is held by Atlanta, 150 and four. The second fastest mile ever trotted at Miami Valley is Spitfire overseas. So the Colts and Geldings all age track record holder right now is uh, Spitfire overseas, 150, one and one. He drew nine. Hasn't nine holes not been favorable for him? Eight and nine, he's had a lot of look at, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of looks at over the last month and a half or so in bottom or slow, lower classes that he struggled with. So is this a new and improved Spitfire? Is he going to be able to overcome the nine hole in the open? That is a very, very tall order uh, to fill. Let's see if he can do it. Kings County's up a little bit, but again, I like what I saw from Kings County last week. A little rickety in the turns. Yes, he was, but his confidence is growing now. He sat in the two hole. Brett moved him over all business through the wire. I suspect a similar trip, hopefully, and a similar finish would be nice. Let's just not use any X's this week for uh, for Kings County. And then we have Locatelli and Yo Mister in the New Holland series. One division of the New Holland series. One division of the New Holland series. Actually, you're right. It is one. No, they would have went with 11. They would have went with 11. 
I'm getting a bad vibe all of a sudden right now. Just like it was cold in the car and then it dropped like two degrees right away and I had a little shiver. Do you have anything to do with that? Yeah. Did you have anything to do with that? Of course, my wife is talking about the sale of White Tiger. And um, as I said, we're trying to do the best we can. I'm trying to do the best I can to make sure we make the right moves for the stable and the right moves for us. I think we have. I think we, we've done a pretty good job over the last couple of months. And we'll continue to chip away and polish the stable. And hopefully, when our babies qualify, and that'll be shortly after our sophomores start racing, we will have the very strongest team we can possibly have at the stable. I, I think, I believe that, looking at our two-year-olds today, watching our three-year-olds train this week, looking at the classes available and where we're able to race, we have a very strong docket for 2024, and I couldn't be happier with the way things have gone thus far. So that is it. That's your opening. The only video left is our top 10 list, which usually in Amy and I are very close. We're going to be different this week, I think, in our top 10 lists, who we pick, where they land, who they are. We'll see. Look at all the videos. But for now, your opening is done. Uh, very pleased with the week we've had this week. I hope you guys agree and are pleased also. I hope you've all had a wonderful week, both at work and with your family. I will talk to you all very soon. Take care.